video sponsored by Parade. I can't wait to tell you more about them. I will never forget that day in 2015 when I saw Kermit dating another pig and I thought, is love even real? This downward spiral caused me to watch the entirety of the very divisive ABC Muppets sitcom. And I came out of it appreciating Miss Piggy more than I ever did before. She really is that girl. To be you, to be lovers. I always knew I'd have a hyperfixation on puppets and it's finally here. You thought I was insufferable before? Wait one second. Bully walk in the building. Don't you just love him? He's my special boy. But anyway, you've probably heard of the Muppets. They've been around since the 50s and were bought by Disney in 2004, which is why this PG-13 sitcom boggles my mind so much. How did Disney allow this to happen? This really doesn't feel like their brand at all. And more importantly, why did they turn Miss Piggy and Kermit into the next Ross and Rachel? We were on a break. This never ending, will they, won't they, that even ends on a play. Don't, Don't get, get on, on that, that plane. plane! Obviously, these two have way more chemistry and moments beyond this series, but I just want to focus on this as a standalone piece, as it definitely explores a scenario beyond what we're used to for these two. Join me for the post-breakup world of Miss Piggy and Kermit. Okay, the whole beyond what we're used to thing wasn't exactly true. What? You see, the first breakup was in 1990 on the Today Show. Miss Piggy was trying to talk to Kermit about their relationship during the interview, which she dismissed. Overall, she was acting like a diva, karate chopping him and the host, Deborah Norville. And let me just say, Deborah sold it. She was so distressed, you could hear the shock in her voice. Kermit, no! But it went deeper than just Kermit dismissing her in the interview. In behind the scenes flashback, he was shown constantly dismissing her on set. She was uncomfortable in this jungle setting, and the shoot even ended with her getting stuck in cement, which they didn't even care enough about to reshoot. On top of her creative voice being shut down, we also see a bit of her internalized classism. Miss Piggy came from very humble beginnings, so when she sees anything perceived as dirty, like when Kermit is seen eating bugs, she is absolutely mortified. Another frog defends Kermit and their frog customs, and compares it to pigs in mud, which just infuriates Miss Piggy even more. This 90s breakup didn't lead anywhere. I couldn't confirm any of this, but many YouTube comments said this was Jim Henson's last performance as Kermit, and his original plans for this arc was for this breakup to lead to Miss Piggy being a washed up star. I think this would have been an interesting choice, as especially in earlier Muppets media, many of Miss Piggy's diva-ish outbreaks would lead to violence. And I guess some could say she desperately needed to be humbled. But I will say this, Miss Piggy from the 90s and Miss Piggy from 2015 are very different. All she needed to be humbled in 2015 was the breakup. The ABC Muppets series, first and foremost, really explored Miss Piggy's body image, which we'll get into a lot more later. But honestly, as I watched, I just kept thinking, why can't we uplift each other? Why can't we uplift ourselves? For example, this top is cute. I love this top and I want to talk more about this top. You know, today's sponsor parade actually gave me this top and I can rave about it and I will. That's what I'm going to do, actually. This is the Afterglow lace-up corset in the color Versailles. I also got the undies if you were curious. They also lace up in the back. How cute is that? Also, if you're curious if the girlies are going anywhere, they won't. I can take a sensible jog. They're not going anywhere. And you don't have to sacrifice your comfort to feel your best. When I heard corset, I thought, oh, I'm gonna have trouble breathing. No, I can sleep in this. This is very comfortable. I adore this. I love the support. I love that I can wear it out. I can pair it with a denim jacket. I can pair it with a skirt. I can wear this so many different ways. Be sure to use my promo code Athena40 for 40% off your purchase store wide. Thank you so much to Parade. I am absolutely obsessed with this. I'm trying to look at the camera. I can't stop looking at myself. Miss Piggy needs some parade undies. She needs to raise her self-esteem. This, I think this would work. Thanks so much to Parade again. Again, that's Athena 40 for 40% 40 off store wide. Now back to the video. I guess I should put my pants back on. This isn't awkward at all. At the very start of the first episode, Pig Girls Don't Cry, we hear how Kermit is the executive producer of Up Late with Miss Piggy, a talk show starring his ex. Also, okay, when Kermit's trying to get everyone's attention, Bunsen tases Beaker. This is the same series that confirms that these two are at least sexually involved. Bunsen and Beaker, why are you wearing each other's clothes? If it happens outside of work, we don't owe him an explanation. So this act was either them being a little freaky or more likely just cartoony violence. Shedding a light that maybe Miss Piggy isn't abusive, maybe they're all just like this. Very unclear, I need to brush up on Muppets TV shows and movies. But regardless, a fictional ship that doesn't line up with real life ideals? Hmm, 
Hmm, sounds familiar. Yeah, I'm plugging this again. The more people hate it, the more it fuels me. So in Miss Piggy's first appearance, she is shooing away her makeup artist, telling her that she's so annoying. Which, to be fair, she is. Why are you continuing to put makeup on Miss Piggy when she said she's done? Three seconds into this video, I'm already like, leave Miss Piggy alone! You're lucky she even performed for you bastards! Then Miss Piggy has a list of demands for her ex and her producer, Kermit. Miss Piggy doesn't like that the janitor knows what's in her trash, so she asked Kermit to place a layer of decoy trash on top of her regular trash. This can be categorized as a classic diva Miss Piggy moment, which it totally is, but it's also a look at Miss Piggy's paranoia as a rising star. What's in her trash that she doesn't want people to see? The other two demands are that the lilacs in her dressing room are not lilac enough. No excuses there, that's a very Mariah Carey level god complex. And she also doesn't want Elizabeth Banks as a guest on tomorrow's show. This is very short notice, so Kermit wants a very good explanation why Miss Piggy doesn't want her on the show. And Miss Piggy's reason is that she hates her stupid face. Listen, she is the face and host of her show, so she really should be final say in who appears on it, but she definitely could have given more of a heads up. Maybe she should have a list of stars she doesn't want to appear on her show, so she doesn't shut them down after they're booked, literally right before they're supposed to go on. We then meet Denise, Kermit's new girlfriend he's been dating for a few months. She makes a cute little joke about his coffee. Hey, sweetie, I got your little Italian. His name's Giuseppe, but I'm chat. She's charming, she's beautiful, no question. Denise runs marketing for the network, so she doesn't work on this specific show, but the network this show is on. Which sounds a bit less sketchy. Kermit explains that they were at a cross-promotional synergy meeting when they hit it off. What does that mean? Is it promoting all the shows on the network and introducing the teams to each other? That's my guess. What's the point? I don't, I don't know. I guess it's just to build up company morale. If morale was code for frog peen. Yeah. And we ended up, uh, uh <laughs> cross-promoting? Kermit's sketchiness does not go unnoticed. When I googled the age of his new girlfriend Denise, this article came up. Kermit the Frog's new girlfriend is younger, skinnier, and blander. Oh, oh, oh. Guys, why is Denise getting caught in the crossfire? It's not her fault. Who could ever replace Miss Piggy? No one. That is an unrealistic expectation to put on her. This article, however, did make me very aware of some of the very damning things Kermit said about pig kind. It can be tough to be the executive producer on your ex's late night TV show, especially when your ex is a pig. I don't know whether any of you have ever dated pigs. Hmm, I wonder how Denise feels about that. To say this about a whole species and then go on to date another pig? Yeah, well, what can I say? Yeah. I'm attracted to pigs. He brushes this off like it's an innocent preference, but once you see his genuine disdain, it recontextualizes this to objectification and fetitization. Athena, you're watching the Muppets! Well, that doesn't mean we should all be puppets in this anti-pig propaganda. And the treatment of Miss Piggy only gets worse from here. Kermit assumes Miss Piggy has beef, or pork rather, with Elizabeth Banks over her failed Hunger Games audition. Kermit thinks this is a ridiculous reason, so he rebooks Elizabeth Banks without Miss Piggy's knowledge. Going on to say that she'll just figure it out when she gets on stage and she'll have to deal with it. A very risky and disrespectful move catching the star of your show off guard live on her own show. But I will say, when Miss Piggy took her anger out on Fozzie, it really hurt. Because look at this silly little guy. Oh. Look at how hard he's trying and how his jokes fall flat. He is me. I think I'm Miss Piggy, but I'm actually this dude. Miss Piggy wasn't even upset that Kermit rebooked Elizabeth. She was more pissed that he didn't realize the reason why she hates her stupid face. I'm so sorry I forgot. How could you? Elizabeth Banks with the wallpaper on one of the worst days of our lives! Kermit broke up with Miss Piggy outside of Pitch Perfect 2, a movie they completely missed because Miss Piggy was too busy taking pictures with fans. It seems like a stupid reason to break up with someone. Miss Piggy even said, over this? But Kermit explains it was over everything. And this was just his breaking point. I understand wanting to go out with someone that respects your time more. And maybe someone who's more down to earth. But let's not skim over the fact that he just walked away. You ended a 30 year relationship and you didn't have the decency to drive her home and unpack this life changing event. Instead you just left her there looking at Elizabeth Banks smiling face taunting her. Fuck Elizabeth Banks. By the way, Miss Piggy does suck it up and go on with Elizabeth Banks because it was never about Elizabeth, obviously. She just wanted closure after months. That's what this whole outburst was about. It's about how unseriously Kermit took this breakup when it's been devastating for her. But speaking of fucking Elizabeth Banks, she's on up late with Miss Piggy and Miss Piggy is doing some self-deprecating humor about how much work she needs to get done and Elizabeth Banks chimes in with, huh, it's gonna be a long hiatus then. You guys have a long hiatus coming up. <laughs> 
The nerve of this woman. You two aren't friends. The joke wasn't appreciated. Why must women tear each other down? Why do we live like this? Episode two, hostile makeover. Uh-oh. This episode starts with a code red, which means Miss Piggy is in a blind rage. Everyone is hiding from her. She's throwing things. A very terrible work environment. Kermit wonders what caused this, and her stylist, Deadly, confirms it wasn't from her weight, age, or size, which she purposely keeps hidden from her because she can't handle it. She would spiral if she knew these basic things about herself. So what was the actual reason? She doesn't have a date for the People's Choice Awards. The entire staff of this TV show now has to play matchmaker so that Miss Piggy doesn't make their lives a living hell. They landed on Josh Groban and during their phenomenal performance, sparks were flying. They made out by the end and began a very passionate romance. Unfortunately, Miss Piggy is seen changing key aspects of the show and herself. She wants to appear more sophisticated for him because he said so. We find out two things from this. Number one, Miss Piggy's ego only appears to be inflated. She is actually deeply insecure and has no real sense of self. Number two, Josh Groban is a piece of shit. Wouldn't the world be a better place if everybody was a little more like me? Why do these celebrities agree to these cameos where they attach their real name only to play manipulative douchebags? I get that it's comedy, but can you imagine if I booked a cameo and this is what they do to the Athena P name? Athena P is gonna teach us how to do her dancey dance. Take your elbow, slap it like so, and launch it in your best friend's arm. Athena P, I would never want to pull a Larry David, scripted or otherwise. Have me be the bestie, the mentor, the mother. But it turns out I'm just a really nice guy. Helping others is what John Stamos is all about. Anyway, the crew of Miss Piggy's show is met with a moral conundrum. On one hand, the show is a snooze fest now, but on the other hand, Miss Piggy has never been nicer to them. She's so thoughtful and considerate now. Kermit points out that they're all preferring Miss Piggy to pretend to be somebody she's not, and that doesn't sit right with him. The rest of the cast also realize they need her usual moody self, or else they won't be motivated to work at all. In other words, Miss Piggy truly is the foundation of all their careers, not only because she's the star, but also because of who she is as as a person. You'd think that when she's her usual furious, unstable self that that wouldn't be productive, but her chaos is actually what sets everything into motion. They benefit tremendously from her constant and never-ending breakdowns. In other words, this career fuels her instability, and no one intervenes because they're all benefiting from it. Kermit snaps Miss Piggy out of this Josh Groban trance she's been in by plastering his name on her billboard. Josh Groban presents Miss Piggy Live. He was undermining her work and she needed to see that. Sure, Kermit did this for his career, for purely selfish reasons, not for the respect and love of his friend slash ex, but a good deed is a good deed regardless. But something incredibly sketchy is that earlier in the episode, Kermit mentions this free pass list he had when he was dating Miss Piggy, meaning that if there was an opportunity for either of them to sleep with the celebrities they had on their list, they would take it and it wouldn't be cheating. Kermit had Leah Thompson on his, and by the end of the episode, he was in an elevator with her and there was this strange tension, and it seemed like they were about to start doing things until Gonzo walked in. What's sketchy about that? They had a free pass list, right? Wrong! That list, that mutual understanding was made when he was in a relationship with Miss Piggy, not in his current relationship with Denise. They never mentioned having a list with Denise. We never heard that that list was transferred over. So did we just witness Kermit about to cheat? What the fuck? Why did they write this? Because comedy. Dude, that excuse works for a standalone episode, not a story-driven mockumentary where we follow beloved characters. A brief joke in this episode is that Gonzo's mother has been in South America for much longer than her cruise was, and he was getting concerned, but he also kept deleting emails from her asking for money because he thought it was spam. Anyway, when Gonzo interrupted them in the elevator, he was updating Kermit on the fact that his mother is alive. They Kermit found my gone. mother. Oh. You gotta hear the story, Kermit. No, 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 I can hear it tomorrow, Gonzo. Kermit tried to shoo Gonzo away because the window of opportunity for cheating was closing. Gonzo is more than just a co-worker. He's... Kermit's friend. Your friend is telling you his mother that he's concerned about is alive and all you're worried about is cheating. Dude, that's a whole new layer of fucked up. And that's not even mentioning how inconsistent Gonzo's family lore is. Next! Episode 3 opens up with Gonzo going behind Kermit's back to approve playing Christina Applegate's embarrassing video of Miss Piggy landing face first into a cake, then stumbling backwards, grabbing the table setting and having the whole table setting fall on top of her. Needless to say, this was incredibly mortifying to the image-obsessed Miss Piggy. On top of that, when she confronted Christina about this in a very level-headed way for Miss Piggy, I must say, she was met with condescension. You're so cute. Further confirmation that a lot of these stars see Miss Piggy as a punchline. Now Miss Piggy has revenge on the mind. 
Also, look at her with her cute crusty white dog. God, I love her and I love crusty white dogs. What are you doing? What are you smelling? The episode ends with Miss Piggy gleefully catching Christina Applegate with cake smushed in her face. How does it taste? She had no idea Christina just went along with it because she felt bad for Scooter, whose job was on the line for this petty revenge. The police ended up catching Miss Piggy suspiciously filming and stalking Christina. So the episode ends with the police arresting Miss Piggy. And unfortunately, it goes nowhere. I hate that. I want to see her bail. I want to see the privilege of these upper class Muppets. I want to see her trending on Twitter, hashtag free Miss Piggy. So much could have been done with this, but instead they went with the approach of let's just reset next episode. With this format, I really want follow through. Commit to the bit, goddammit. In episode four, Pig Out, we see Miss Piggy overhear that the cast and crew go out to a bar after every taping, but they've never invited her. She complains to Kermit about this, but he explains to her that they deserve downtime without their bosses there. And he admits he's not invited either. I always viewed Muppets as friends and equals, so this show really took a different approach. Miss Piggy does not understand this boundary, asking Kermit to ask them to invite her so she can say no. At first I thought this confirmed that she thought she was above it, but once they ask her, she actually says yes which means she really does want them to love her. Kermit in a confessional rants about how desperate Miss Piggy is to be loved by everyone, but then goes on to admire how good she is at getting what she wants. This shows he still cares about her and has positive emotions towards her. That plus the longing looks and they're making it really obvious that he misses her. A very strange and interesting thing to show while he's in a new relationship. I mean, it's classic sitcom. It screams Ross and Rachel in just a ridiculous way. But at the same time, I can't stop watching and wish there was more. But anyway, at the start of the night, Miss Piggy made everything really awkward with how out of touch she is. We don't have those. What, landscape designers? Landscapes. She is stupid rich. We already knew this. But rubbing her wealth in their faces seems completely unintentional. She's just that unaware. Many TV shows make celebrities completely unable to relate to regular jack-offs, as Death Clock would say. And I think that level of stupidity is what makes them fun to watch. So anyway, after that awkward exchange, famous actor Ed Holmes, Holmes decides to karaoke with the group after recognizing Miss Piggott. And they're all having the time of their lives. I admire how they were able to incorporate celebrity cameos, which The Muppets is known for, into this new format. And this is the kind of cameo I would want. He just shows up, is all awesome, and then heads out. Everyone loved having Miss Piggy party with them, not only because she knew these awesome celebrities, but also because she assures everyone that coming in late tomorrow is chill and that she doesn't care. This sends Kermit into a frenzy, especially after she called him a fun sucker and everyone laughed at him. So what does he do? He manipulates Miss Piggy by appealing to her narcissistic god complex. He tells her she's so much better than everyone else to the point where she should not be hanging out with these regular jack-offs. The crew is upset they lost her and the awesome party she'd invite them to. And no one knew Kermit was behind the whole thing. He doesn't have a shred of empathy. He's just positively giddy his plan worked. He pats himself on the back over how he can get what he wants every time and said that he learned from the best, obviously longing for Miss Piggy again. This show made Kermit act in his own self-interest just as much as Miss Piggy, if not more. Other shows characterize him as her opposite so they even each other out. But in this, he is just maniacal. Their egos are parallels. Episode 5, Miss Piggy has a grudge against Reese Witherspoon over winning an Oscar. Kermit was thrown completely off guard at this because Miss Piggy set up a decoy grudge proving Miss Piggy has a one-track mind, angered only by one thing at a time, and she can be so fueled by jealousy, she pretends to have beef with others to get closer to her actual enemy, to her actual target. Reese Witherspoon talks about Habitat for Humanity, where she builds houses, and Miss Piggy decides she's going to show up to and build houses better than Reese and upstage her. Once again, Miss Piggy lacks all self-awareness. She shows up in a limo, in stilettos, and she poses for paparazzi that just isn't there. During this petty competition, the press came just in time to witness Miss Piggy push Reese into the frame of the house, causing one of the walls to collapse. In a rare moment of vulnerability, we see Miss Piggy break down crying. Kermit suggests they can blame her anger on dehydration or sun poisoning. But Miss Piggy says she has to apologize. And I thought, damn, this video is writing itself. What selflessness. What bravery. She also casually revealed she gave her dog a facelift. I would never do that to my precious smelly Melly. Oh, also that on-air apology was just toxic gossip train before toxic gossip train. Probably still a bit more sincere than toxic gossip train, but Kermit did point out that the production of that song cost as much as 
two houses. But when talking about intention, this obviously wasn't Miss Piggy saying fuck you to the people who needed the houses. She wasn't even thinking about them. That might make it even worse. But anyway, as I was saying, the only fuck you she wanted to deliver was to Reese Witherspoon. <laughs> We finally see Kermit's girlfriend Denise again in episode 6. Denise was a musical theater major, so when she saw the wickedly talented Kristen Chenoweth, Christine Chenoweth, she just has to talk to her, making things very awkward for Kermit and Miss Piggy. Kristen Chenoweth gave credit where it's due, saying Miss Piggy handled herself really well. Miss Piggy's reply was the following. You handled yourself beautifully. Yeah, well, I am pretty great with kids. So, uh... Sketchy age difference confirmed. Later in the day, Yolanda told Kermit that she made a reservation for him and Denise for her birthday tomorrow. Yolanda, the secretary, very fed up with dealing with Kermit's personal life, also throws in direct quote here. Am I supposed to pick up a gift too? Or have you decided you want to be part of your own relationship? Get his ass, Yolanda! Get his ass! He dismisses the idea of a gift because she says she doesn't want one. People tell him that women say they don't want things when they really do. And I think that's really, really stupid. Don't play mind games. Say what you want. But once again, how friends is this piece of dialogue? So now Kermit is freaking out because buying gifts for women is hard. Oh. Right, Joey? It is so hard to shop for girls. I told you, it's Muppet Friends, but most of the characters aren't even friends. Also, maybe getting gifts for women would be easier if you talked to them and got to know them and used your brains. I don't know, just a thought. But Kermit is clearly not using his brain because you know who he asks for help to get a gift for his current girlfriend? He goes to his ex-girlfriend, Miss Piggy. Oh he even God. forgot he had a meeting at this time, so he sends Miss Piggy to get a gift for him to give to his girlfriend. It was beyond just asking for advice, which was already weird. Miss Piggy is now stuck giving a gift to her ex-boyfriend's new girlfriend. I genuinely didn't think it could get worse than that, but then he was pissy that she was late. What took you so long? Dude, you couldn't even get the gift on your own. You have no right. You have zero rights. The gift Piggy picked out was actually very thoughtful and something Kermit clearly could not have thought up on his own. But she does slip in a tiny fuck you by having the jewelry box she got Denise play a song. The song is Stevie Wonder's You Are the Sunshine of My Life, which is Kermit and Miss Piggy's song. To be fair, earlier in the episode, she asked him if him and Denise have a song and he said no. You walked into that one, my guy. From your emotionally unintelligent request to your ex, to the fact that you don't even have a couple song with your new girlfriend in the first place. Pettiness is sometimes justified. I'm just gonna say it. I don't think Miss Piggy did anything wrong here. In fact, I think she was being far too nice. Don't ask your ex to buy a gift for your girlfriend that is messed up! I think she knows that now. Episode 7 is very Kermit-centric. His day starts out very high stress. A golf cart crashes into the stage. Miss Piggy is stuck in an elevator. Fozzie falls down the elevator shaft and isn't seen for the rest of the episode, which is really concerning. And the whole opening dilemma ends off with Kermit passing out. Denise is by his side, calming him down. And so is Miss Piggy. And they both agree he needs to take the day off and unwind. The way they butt heads in this scene, it feels like Kermit has two girlfriends competing for his attention. If I were Denise, I would be so pissed, dude. But this video isn't about Denise or Kermit. It's about Miss Piggy. And her winter clothes get destroyed this episode. And that's about it. Okay, I know I said I was only gonna focus on Miss Piggy, but I love when Kermit sings Rainbow Connection. It makes me tear up. It's nice to see him return to his roots, as he said. This is also the most likable he's been for this entire show's run. Miss Piggy was in episode 8 even less. And by even less, I mean not at all. It was the only episode she wasn't in. We do see Kermit meddling in his friend Fozzie's relationship because Kermit looks down on him. And this wasn't even a spur of the moment decision either. Denise desperately tried to get him to shut up. It just didn't work. If you love him, you'll keep your cute little green trap zipped. But don't you think he should know? Zip him? At the start of episode nine, we hear an argument between Miss Piggy and Kermit. Kermit says they can't have a bottle of Piggy Water on her desk during the show because it's an unpaid advertisement. Piggy Water is a business Miss Piggy's trying to get off the ground because she's an entrepreneur. As soon as you open it up, there's lipstick on it. Like, she took a sip of our drink. We'll take 20. I'm actually reading up on the comically slow rollout of FTC guidelines for influencers. The old fucks running the Federal Trade Commission a good 10 years after social media was invented was like, So let me get this straight. When the Kardashians were telling me about a tea that makes you shit, that wasn't just friendly advice from a friend of mine? 
So according to the FTC website, if an influencer owns a brand and it's really obvious they own the brand, disclosure is not necessary for the ad. I tried looking up television guidelines and couldn't find anything, but if I had to assume, it probably doesn't work the same way because the ad doesn't just need the show's approval, it needs the network's approval. I was gonna say, how big could the risk possibly be? It's just water. But then Kermit looked at the label and exclaimed, 30 grams of fat? What? So this shit was for sure not approved by the FTC. I feel like this is just a hop, skip, and a jump away from Miss Piggy inventing pink sauce. Remember that? Remember when that was a thing? It's so funny and concerning how many real-life pop culture moments remind me of Miss Piggy. A caricature of an unempathetic, frivolous celebrity can never be so exaggerated that it's out of the realm of possibility for real people. Because she truly does embody the consequences of what such a large pedestal does to someone's psyche. I'm not saying, woe is them, look at the poor rich celebrities. But I am saying this phenomenon phenomena should be studied. Oh, by the way, we found out where the grams of fat are coming from. There's butter in the water. Kermit is horrified when he walks into Miss Piggy's latest beauty treatment. Deadly explains what we're witnessing, because believe it or not, it's, it's not acupuncture. It's called electronasal contouring. They are electrocuting her face. Miss Piggy refused to let Gonzo have a Daredevil segment on the show because Gonzo is on her list for accidentally messing with her duet. So much for one grudge at a time, I guess. She's evolving. She's growing to be even more petty. But here's where we get to her unfair treatment. Her face zapping treatment temporarily paralyzes her. So Deadly and Kermit decide to put a pen in her hand and make her sign off on the Gonzo stunt that she explicitly said no to. It's interesting just how much of sitcom shenanigans comes down to lack of respect and boundaries to a concerning degree. You don't hire an assistant because they're cute. You hire them because they're qualified. No, I hear what you're saying and, and, and that makes a lot of sense. But can I just say one more thing? Mm -hmm. Look how pretty. You see, the joke here is that Rachel uses her position of power to hire somebody that she's sexually and romantically interested in. <laughs> you don't get it? Good. Never change. The rest of the episode is all about Gonzo facing their fears. I can honestly do a deep dive about each and every one of these characters. The conservative eagle having a crush on Janice the hippie. Scooter's disdain of his mother's boyfriend. Yolanda being far out of Rizzo's league, but still entertaining him for some reason. But this isn't a lure. It's a lure light, where I allow myself to keep some of my sanity as a little treat. Moving on, episode 10, Fozzie and his human girlfriend broke up, so who's there to cheer him up? Well, Kermit tried, but Fozzie quickly shut him down, saying, You've never been broken up with, so you don't really know what this is like. So what does Kermit do? He asks his ex, who he broke up with, to cheer up Fozzie. This shit is pissing me off. It's not easy being greedy. Greedy, you're being greedy. You're a greedy bastard, Kermit the Frog. Most of the time, Kermit actually does put his friends first. Well, all of his friends except for Miss Piggy. He probably figures, oh, she's already putting herself first, so I don't have to. What a croak of shit. So when Miss Piggy talks to Fozzie, because of course she agreed, she tries to cheer him up with retail therapy. After all, these are the days of girlhood. A relatable bop. If you are mad at that song, <laughs> we see Miss Piggy trying to give him an array of options for gifts. She was willing to give all this stuff to Fozzie, but Fozzie still exclaimed that he missed Becky. So Miss Piggy said fight for her. He could have just taken the advice, which he did. But before he did, he asked the invasive question of why didn't you fight for Kermit? It's clear she was trying to suppress her regret and bitterness about not swallowing her pride before he moved on. But Fozzie, with this total lack of self-awareness, rubbed salt in the wound, stating that she's alone for Christmas. Now she she can't avoid her sadness anymore. And you know who's there to cheer her up? Of course, it's Kermit. Listen, I have nothing against exes being friends, but not this soon after and with this emotional attachment to each other. It's so unbelievably unhealthy. Classic sitcom. Remember when Ross and Rachel's first kiss took place while Ross was in a whole ass relationship? Ew. While Miss Piggy and Kermit didn't do anything physical like that, this moment still felt far too intimate. You were my favorite show long before you were on TV. You were my favorite show too, Kermie. I believe this is the first time in this series that she used the pet name Kermie and look at his face. You know, the only hard part of the holidays is uh, all the confusing feelings. You're just going to admit that in an on-camera confessional? Your Honor, this man's still in love. Oh, I see. Well then, execution at once. Episode 11 picks up after winter break and Denise is feeling optimistic because Kermit says he's going to set clear boundaries with Miss Piggy and have a better work-life balance. You beautiful idiot. You actually believed him when he said that? 
Miss Piggy also declares she's over Kermit after a trip to Argentina, where she rescued this little baby penguin. Did I say rescued? I mean, she smuggled this little baby penguin back. I never talked about the intro, but it's this fast forward frantic craziness that ends with Kermit not getting any food or coffee. But in this episode, the sequence now ends with Miss Piggy delivering a coffee to Kermit, foreshadowing the relationship possibly turning a corner. New conflict, the network thinks that their show is not hip enough, so they hire this branding guru named Ponche, and all of his ideas are shit. So even though Kermit promised his girlfriend that he'd be there for her 5k run tomorrow, he missed it to pull an all-nighter at the office that ended with him and Miss Piggy being kind of cuddly, like they fell asleep next to each other. And Denise walked in on that, and how she didn't break up from that alone is beyond me. But she gives him another chance, and as Darman would say, she instantly regrets it. So Kermit's idea to breathe new life into the show is by including the crew for more on-camera, on-stage moments, to have them be performers as well. Turning the talk show into more of a variety sketch show that we're used to from the Muppets. Very cute. There was also a really terrible Miley Cyrus We Can't Stop reference where Miss Piggy is twerking in the VMA's outfit. It's so dated. It hurt me so deeply. Girly, I'm on your side for almost everything. I can excuse your evil capitalistic ways, but this is where I draw the line. So anyway, Ponche is super insulted that they didn't take any of his ideas, so he sabotaged the show by getting the guest stars Key and Peele to drop out last minute. So Kermit and Miss Piggy decided, oh, what's a better way to fill the time than the super romantic duet between us as Denise is being cucked in the audience? They've done non-lovey-dovey songs before. They've performed Rainbow Connection as a duet in other Muppet shows, and that would actually tie this episode together very nicely. But no, dude, they gazed into each other's eyes and somehow Kermit is surprised that Denise broke up with him. His delusion knows no bounds. Meanwhile, Miss Piggy is killing it. She even congratulates her new co-stars. You'd think she'd be threatened that she's getting less airtime, but she isn't. She's really come to appreciate everyone. Women are my favorite guy. Episode 12, A Tale of Two Piggies, is all about Miss Piggy being body shamed on the red carpet of Zootopia over her tail popping out. Dude, they're gonna make speciesist comments on the red carpet for Zootopia? Did they learn fucking nothing from that movie? She's being body shamed left and right. She's on the news. Concerned parents are protesting the network. They even made fun of Miss Piggy for snorting, making her even more ashamed of who she is. Sam Eagle is throwing a fit. And while this is happening, Kermit said one of the funniest things he said all season. Have you seen it? Well, I, I believe you know the answer to that question. You are not taking this seriously. Sam is a touch-starved, nice guys finished last type, Kermit. Don't fan the flames. Sam Eagle also types out an apology for Miss Piggy. A woman having to apologize about her body and show business? Very realistic. I forgot I was watching the Muppets for a second. God damn. Miss Piggy meets a fan named Alinda, and at first she's just trying to brush her off, but Alinda explains that in her gym class, her tail popped out, and all the kids made fun of her, but when she saw it happen to Miss Piggy, and if it can happen to Miss Piggy, it must not be so bad. A message about how representation empowers people? Miss Piggy being a feminist icon? Yes, that is what we just witnessed. Pay attention. The network and sponsors tried to get Miss Piggy to shut up about this very controversial topic, the controversial topic being her own body, but everyone stood with her, including their musical guest, Joan Jett, who sang a rendition of I Don't Give a Damn About My Reputation while shaking her little pigtail. How much did they pay her to do this? It was very iconic, though. Episode 13, deadly monologues for the thousandth time about how a large part of his job is distracting Miss Piggy so she doesn't spiral about how few people she has in her life. So no emotional introspection for her, which leads to stunted growth, so she could stay the same forever for the sake of the show. Well, I'm getting deja vu. Neverland, people don't age. This we already know. But I think the one thing preventing them from aging is the inability to grow. The inability to emotionally grow. Smee and everyone else are stuck enabling, and Hook is stuck being stubborn and selfish forever. It's like they're stuck in these roles Disney assigned for them. Seriously, what is Disney's obsession with staying unaware and childlike forever? Is it to stop people from looking behind the curtain at their disgusting policies? Or is it to distract people with the sweet and enticing aroma of nostalgia? Is that what I'm doing? I'd like to say I go a little bit deeper than that, but honestly, I he led her astray with food. <laughs> That's all it took for her to be misdirected. <laughs> what? 
It's relatable. Miss Piggy is in search of a real friend. Deadly mentions that he's putting on a theatrical production that no one has come to see, but Miss Piggy doesn't really see how that's relevant. She decides to go to aerial yoga with Janice, but still drags Deadly along. When no one wants to partner up with Miss Piggy, Deadly dramatically takes a fake phone call, yelling at the person who doesn't exist on the other end about how this is Miss Piggy's personal time and how dare they call her back on the show. No one was calling her back on the show. He was trying to look out for her so she wouldn't be put in an awkward social situation. He really does look out for her beyond work. One could even call him her friend. Kermit just realized he's been dumped by Denise. Bruh. He is just as delusional as Miss Piggy. Remember how I said they're parallels? But as she sings sadly and isn't really feeling the performance, Deadly is on the sidelines coaching and cheering her on. And that's when she finally realizes what a good friend he's always been to her. And he really is. Let's just ignore that one time that he made her sign off on something she said no to. The justification in this world is that she would do the same. Listen, shut up. Let me just enjoy one of the sweetest episodes of the series. This is the episode that inspired me to make this whole video, okay? In the end, Miss Piggy got the entire crew to see Deadly's play. This was solely for her friend. This is the one thing she's done all series with no malice behind it. She has grown as a person and this episode alone has shown that, but it only gets more bonkers from here, let me tell you. You're not ready for the Miss Piggy trauma. In episode 14, Kermit's nephew Robin comes to visit. Robin's parents recently got divorced and he says the only thing that got him through this tough year is knowing that Kermit and Miss Piggy are still together. Now one can say this kid is way too invested in his uncle's relationship, but they show just how much time Robin has spent with the two of them throughout the years. Also, as a child of divorce, here she fucking goes again. I'm just saying, it's rough out here when you've seen every relationship in your family from your parents' generation fail. I get it, okay? Miss Piggy comes in to give Robin gifts because she still really cares about him. And before Kermit could even film Miss Piggy on his plan to pretend to still be together, he tries to plant one on her. Good God, dude. He explains and is immediately embarrassed and backtracks when they're alone, saying it was a stupid plan. This is when we find out that Miss Piggy had no idea Denise and Kermit broke up. Oh, and she also reminds us how much younger she is. I really hope this is just Miss Piggy being dramatic and Denise is like three or four years younger than her. But the constant jokes is really giving me 20 year old woman and 50 year old man vibes. Kermit, are you a piece of shit like my father? Trauma fart, it's a sensible trauma fart. Those of you who know me knew that was coming and honestly I was really brave and strong for holding my tongue that long. Miss Piggy and Kermit go to laser tag with his nephew and it was adorable and shit why am I rooting for them now? But for somebody like me who handles them all of her emotions, this feels really good. She needs a lot more time to be single and find herself. But also, wow, it's so obvious there's still so much love there. And I adore that Miss Piggy said to Robin that he can call her Aunt Miss Piggy. And after that sweet maternal moment, more sexual and romantic tension between the frog and pig. Very cool. Very, very, very cool. In the penultimate episode, Miss Piggy broke her leg dancing to single ladies. Perhaps this is foreshadowing the breaking of her single life? Kermit and Deadly take her to the hospital, which she avoids at all costs. We're gonna unpack that later, but I have to say, bringing her to the hospital with a guy named Deadly is a bold move. You'd think they'd point that out, but they don't. Ponche producer guy decides that Piggy has to sit this one out, so in this episode she'll be replaced by a DJ. When she got this news in her hospital bed, she started crying, and she opened up about some genuinely terrifying shit. She talked about when she was younger growing up on a farm, when her family broke their legs, they were slaughtered and turned into human or dog food. I keep forgetting humans in this world eat pigs. Like, this is joked about constantly, but I thought there was a difference between pig pigs and puppet pigs. Like the Pluto and Goofy differences. But no, Miss Piggy's family members were eaten. And she said this is the career version of that. The moment she's off air, her career is dead. As she ages, she feels impending doom. Her fame is the only thing that saved her. And now she doesn't want to experience life without it. Oh wow, this is a really sad episode. And here I was making a deadly joke. This, this is serious. What the fuck is wrong with you, insensitive prick? But no one is more insensitive than Kermit. You know what he says about her dead family? That that's so gross. Why would he say that? You will get your comeuppance one day, Kermit the Frog. I'll never forget the day these humans ate my legs right in front of me. Ew, that's disgusting. Are you five, bro? Wait a minute, this line from earlier in the series, he also eats 
pigs. What? Also, his solution was for her to host the show from her hospital bed. Why not assure her that she'll be fine even without the show? That there's more to her life than being a star? You guys should really have this conversation. There's only one episode left before the show was cancelled. Also, she was super high on morphine during the show. But the show goes smoothly, everyone loves it, Miss Piggy is iconic as always. But after the show, the cameras were still rolling, and the entire cast and crew heard Miss Piggy and Kermit exchange I love yous. Miss Piggy was still high when she said it, but you can tell Kermit really meant it, because he said it quietly to himself. And also unknowingly to all of his employees reacting really loudly. Look at, the, look at them cheering. Two of my least favorite tropes. Repeating something quieter for dramatic effect. And the whole, and everyone cheered thing. I think I need to wipe again. I think I need to wipe again. <laughs> episode, Kermit decides he wants to do a big grand gesture to tell Miss Piggy he wants to be in a relationship again. And he even sends a kissy emoji. Dude is confident. Meanwhile, Miss Piggy asks Deadly what that whole emoji thing was about. And Deadly tells her about the whole I love yous that happened while she was high. And she is so hype. She really wants to get back together too. But Deadly asks her if she's sure because Kermit really hurt her. I love that Deadly is finally encouraging thinking things through. It feels like their friendship really leveled up beyond the surface level things. Although don't get me wrong, they still indulge in surface level things. What are you going to wear for the most romantic day of your life? Something pink and sheer, maybe floral. Hmm, such as? What if I said black sequins? Mm, please. I love them both so much and I want to see more of them being friends. One of the best things to come out of this show in my opinion. Just ignore that one scene and it's perfect. Kermit then 180s on his decision to ask out Miss Piggy because Dr. Bunsen Honeydew scientifically proved that their love will cause the end of the show. That on top of Fozzie pointing out the very real possibility of them breaking up again leading to Kermit being fired this time around. But Fozzie trusts his friend's decision making. Fozzie, you shouldn't. I'm sure you've already given this plenty of thought. Ah, uh, actually, I, I, I flipped the coin. Who are you? Kermit makes his indecision known to all of his friends. So when he finally does definitively decide, you know what, I am gonna ask out Miss Piggy, Miss Piggy already heard from everyone that this decision was made with the coin toss and that Kermit was unsure still. So now she doesn't want to give it another shot. Kermit's second to last ditch effort is to get the musical guest to perform You Are the Sunshine of My Life, which is Miss Piggy and his song. And when that doesn't work, his friends and coworkers have the brilliant idea that they're gonna sing the song too, showing Miss Piggy that they all want them to get back together. Oh great, peer pressure, great idea. Deadly, get off the stage. Don't encourage this nonsense. Also, Kermit didn't even get up and sing. That would have been the best gesture, actually. He didn't do anything until he boarded her flight to Thailand. This seems like a small detail, but I need to dissect this. <laughs> That's an expression. That's an expression. Anyway, Miss Piggy orders a pre-flight calzone. Kermit is there to give her one because there's no such thing as pre-flight calzones. She lists a bunch of flights where she had one and he confirms that every time it was him. But the one that really stuck out to me was she mentioned her trip to Argentina. And he says again, yes, that was me. Her trip to Argentina was when Kermit and Denise were together. This motherfucker in a new relationship thought, mm, I gotta get Miss Piggy her calzone before she goes on that plane. That's so messed up, dude. Poor Denise. Never thought Kermit's picture would end up in the Fumble Hall of Fame next to Mordecai, but here we are. The entire series ends with Miss Piggy passing out from Ambien before she can give her final answer to Kermit. Their love really did kill the show. Again, maybe I'm reading into everything as usual. <laughs> Me reading into things? What? Never. But I think this was a really compelling series for Miss Piggy. Like, I really liked her journey. I wanted to see more of it. To all the Kermit the Frog fans out there, I am sorry. This was not his proudest moments. It was actually a Kermit the Frog cringe comp, I will say that. I found Miss Piggy so interesting that I, uh, wrote a song inspired by her journey. Yes, I know it's very silly, but please enjoy the song Fallen Star and the music video starring Bollywog. Are you ready to get emo? Life of a fallen star, huh? burned out and far, no one knows where you are. I only exist when people know me.
no one knows where you are. I only exist when people know me. I only exist when people show me. Am I only here for you to consume? One way or another I'll meet my doom. I can go out I only exist when